Hi, this is Janine. I ha hear or see a lot of comments and people talking about insurances um, on the Facebook TMJ sites that I'm on. And one thing, um, you know, some insurances don't cover and some of them do. Some of them, even if you call the insurance company, they, um, and they type in TMJ or whatever, they don't find anything. So this is how I found out about what my insurances covers. Um, my prior insurance, we've had, I've had two prior insurances. One did not cover um, the treatment that I was having done with LVI, which none of them do. Um, but then another, when I saw another specialist, my insurance, it was an HMO at the time, covered everything. I now have, again, a PPO. And um, you can see I'm with Anthem. And for this policy that we have, I have gotten a lot of my treatment um, covered and some of the things that I started doing that I started learning about that I'm going to share here. So on each website, your, your insurance will have um, what is called a UM guideline, a clinical UM guideline. So you need to go on and find this or ask them where to find it and then look up the temporomandibular disorders. You can search and um, find some information that way. Here they go over some of the, the things, um, descriptions of it and non-surgical treatments so I got under this my um, appliances, my oral appliances or, or guards um, for treatment covered. Um, then uh, it- Let me here, out, I'm stuck in your pocket. Surgical procedures. Um, this one goes over anthro anthrotesis or however you say these things. I am terrible at uh, medical terms and then with braces on top of it, um, I'm, I'm bad. So this one for the, the TMJ disorders, this has a number of things that it covers. So it goes over your criterias. Um, and I would, I would highly recommend anybody with a lot of pain, a lot of TMJ, if you have not had a CT scan or an MRI, I would get one. Um, unless you know for sure, you know, your dentist has done a full, um, a full scan and you've seen the joints and they totally look normal. Um, if you ask them if it looks normal or uh, in the joint, if, if it's disfigured at all, beaked is another or hooked is another term that they use in the joint that um, it's where your, your socket is, it, your, it, it's def become deformed, your bones become deformed. Um, they can also tell sometimes a little bit if there's still active arthritis or if there's arthritis in your joint. So, um, if you're continuing to have pain and it's not just muscular, you have clicking, bad clicking, or you can't open your mouth very far. That's what I'm got going on. My discs are displaced. So, and one's torn so it's it, they don't retract so what you hear when you hear the clicking it's the the disc going in and out there's um youtube videos that you can you can see on that and that's the disc going in and out and um mine do not go in and out so i can only open my mouth that wide if you 
stick your fingers in your mouth that's as far as I can open my mouth because they're displaced they're in front they my jaw cannot open normally um but back to the guideline okay so that that's a um that was the MRI diagnosed that they were torn they're they're displaced and the MRI um is looking for or is better for tissues so your discs, your muscles, your, if there's, a, say you have a, a, a cyst in there or a tumor or something like that, um, it does those things better. Um, then the CT scan, it's more involved than just a regular dental. It's more, it's a more involved x-ray. And they measure your opening. They'll measure it. At, um, they'll take photos of your mouth open, closed, um, all these different stuff. And same thing with the MRI. You have to do them with your mouth open and closed. Um, but here, also, back to the insurance. Here they have all the codes and your medical codes. Now, if you're a dentist or doctor that you're seeing for TMJ, for your quote unquote specialist, um, they may or may not bill insurances. You can ask them if they do. And if they don't, your insurance should have forms for you to basically submit them yourself. Now, something to know if your doctor or dentist, if you if they ask for you to pay up front and then they will bill the insurance, what will happen is your insurance will pay them back. So they will pay them what, what they would normally pay for a procedure. Now, if your dentist or specialist doesn't tell you, you have to stay on top of it. Because if you've already paid it and then your insurance pays them again then they need to pay you back. Now I've had where I've had to check on with my insurance to see if they've paid it, then go back to my, my doctor and say, hey, my insurance said you paid, can I get my money back now? And then they finally reimburse me, but um, a couple different times it's taken them a long time to reimburse me. So if you... In, if you um, put in the insurance, if you make the claim and you fill out the form and you send in the claim, then the insurance will pay you back. Um, I've had to do that with my braces. I still have not gotten paid back for my braces, so it still hasn't been approved. But anyhow, you'll see all the different codes that under this plan under the TMJ disorders guideline for my insurance those are all the things that they'll pay um, they also have the diagnosis codes so you'll need that um, has some more information and a bunch of mumbo jumbo that You'll probably never you'll never go through but um, it's good to have this because you can then go hey you know what procedure does my doctor want me to have these are some options that mine were um, I was making notes things that were in my file um, for this UM code. So it's called a clinical UM guideline. Another one, it's another clinical UM guideline. And I'm going to show you this. This is the other one. This is for the surgery portion um, that some of the surgeries are covered under and some of my stuff um, that I'm having to deal with will probably be covered under this. So look up that for your UM guideline. 
and this goes over um, stuff for surgical treatment for sleep apnea and snoring and TMJ disorders. Right there. Um, goes over the different things. And my insurance paid for my MRI. This insurance paid for my MRI um, for my jaw. And they paid for my um, my guard, my night guard or um, splint, which I don't wear anymore because I'm in braces now because I'm getting um, surgery. So here's all of the different things for surgery. And again, codes to go along with it. And this goes through, here's your, if you've heard of Lafort, here's your different where Lafort is covered. Um, Pages here. So here's your different bunch of different codes. If they ask for whatever code. Now most of your doctors will do this. Um, you know, if especially if you're in a in a position like I'm in, where I'm getting um, my joints replaced they will do all this for you because most likely your um your doctor will or the insurance will probably not not want to pay something or your doctor will have to make a case for you if if your case isn't um as straightforward so here's a, just a bunch of information again for your insurances and how to get some stuff paid or if you don't know if they pay it or they you want to find out what exactly they pay what their guideline is what you have to have in order to get a procedure done you know um, there's certain things like in the TMJ one you have to have both of these following things or two out of these four following things that you have to have in order to get it covered. So those are the kind of things that you want to look into prior or to let yourself become educated on your insurance. Um, I hope this helped. I hope this helps for somebody who is thinking their insurance doesn't pay for it, that their insurance might pay for it. Some stuff to look at. Uh, it, again, I encourage you, if you haven't already talked to your general practice doctor, um, ask them. Sometimes they know uh, people that are in the field of met on the medical side for TMJ, um, you can ask them about it. Go to them with some of your issues. There's so many issues that are connected with the TMJ. It you know it could be that you're muscular. It could be something else. So really become educated on your particular disorder. What and why you're having it and what you can do through your insurance to cover it. Most dental, I don't think any dental actually cover anything um, to do with TMJ. I mean, I, I think I even wanted to get a night guard at night from my dentist that was just for grinding or something like that. And they wouldn't pay for that. At the time, I didn't know to do this and to look and see if my medical insurance would pay for it. And I think that was the same insurance that 
later on I found out that they would have paid for it um, or the next insurance after that so anyhow something to look into something to know something to ask questions on uh, as a lot of this you can get online so I encourage you to search and get this in your hot little hands have a wonderful day